Music producers is Curtis King, CurtisKingBeats.com. And for those of you that are spelling it out phonetically, shut up. Me producer? He sound like he's there, the producer. Shut up. Let me tell y'all while I'm not selling exclusive beats and probably not track outs ever again. Let's talk about it. Music producers, there was a fiasco that happened a few weeks ago that involved my beat and a Suicide Boy song, and we're not gonna go back down that alley because it was for a song that was about two years old, and we have moved on for that, we off of that. However, many of you were asking me, if I find myself in the same position, what should I do? First and foremost, let's talk about preventing yourself from being in that situation to begin with. Because had I took the steps that I took now, three years ago, that situation would have never Never even reared its head the way it did. And here's one thing that I did first and foremost. I believe that had I put up my instrumental into the content ID system and I put my instrumental up and made it available for streaming, first and foremost, anybody who would have used that, whether they use it legally or, or unlawfully, would have been flagged and I would have been monetizing all those videos that included my instrumental. So this goes to people who use my tag beats, my uh, who's, who buy the beat and don't necessarily give me credit, doesn't matter. I would have flagged that and I at least would have been getting a nice little monetization check because they would not have been able to monetize that YouTube video. Why? Because it would say that the owner of this instrumental, of this work, between the seconds of 40 to 45 seconds is Curtis King of CurtisKingBeats.com. Hi, that's me. These are steps I didn't take back then because I didn't quite understand what the content ID system could do for me if a situation like that happened. Now, I made many of videos back then. I was still experimenting with things. I'm like Moses. I like to go out there. I like to lead the way and, and, and I'll tell you, hey, it's, it's looking good. Let's go on through this thing. But in that situation, I did not take all of the precautions that I should have. One thing I would have done is made all of my instrumentals, all of them, available for streaming. Second thing that I'm doing now that I probably wouldn't have done then because I really needed the money two years ago, stop selling exclusive beats. I am no longer selling exclusive beats. <laughs> Why would you not sell exclusive beats? Well, in the beat selling community, Curtis, like that's that's like that's bread. That's like five hundred dollars, seven hundred dollars, eight hundred dollars, nine hundred dollars. You could sell it for whatever you want and have the least money that came before it. I understand that, and I've defended the use of selling exclusive beats. But then I started thinking about it and doing the numbers. Really doing the numbers is what inspired me to do this. Now, not so much that situation we talked about, but you are leaving so much money on the table when you sell a beat exclusively. You may be in a situation like I was where I needed that exclusive money, that $500, that $700 that came in, I needed that, right? That's gonna be a huge chunk of rent or whatever I was going through at that time. But now as I look at it, I'm like, that $700 cost me or might have cost me about $3,000 in the span of a year. Now, most producers are not caring about that. Most human beings don't care about what's gonna happen in a year, right? They're like, I'm just trying to get past today. I understand that. But the long-term play is really what business is all about, at least successful businesses. This is what it's all about. I said an example one time and people got confused. Maybe they got mad because they was confused. But if I told you I'm going to give you, this is a philosophy that I got from a book called The Slight Edge. It's also a philosophy that has been shared in the compound effect that small increments, any success, huge success is not the result of a few home runs. It's the result of so many small increments that make up that overall win. Like a war is not won in just one battle. It's these small battles that equal up to the, the the main, main, I am the victor, right? And so as we think about what happens over the year of a beat being leased, for 30 bucks, 50 bucks, 70 bucks, whatever you're leasing your beats for, there's a lot of money that you could potentially be making. I started looking at my beats and realizing that on average in a year, the beats that I lease and I don't sell exclusively end up selling for anywhere from between 1,700 and about 
$2,800. And I started looking at that and I'm like, I sell a beat, say a beat, you know, sales, let's just keep it simple. Say a beat that's not really selling that much has about three sales at a price point of about $30, right? So that's $90 that I got from it in leases. And then somebody comes along and says, I want to buy it for $500 exclusively. It's $590. I left all that money on the table for what that beat would have sold in a year had it reached the 1700 or 1800 like that's the my worst beats do that over a year 1800 1900 i would have been missing out on that because i was here for the fast money so i'm not selling exclusive beats anymore because that fast money is going to end up costing you in the future and i'm here for the long haul i'm not here to just sell beats and leave i'm not here as a money come up i'm here to make sure that all those pieces of property that i export from fl studio i said property i mean property all those houses all of those apartment buildings that have a vacancies inside of them or have people that are occupying the vacancies they need to be making me money in a year and two years and three years i am leaving so much money on the table by selling exclusives no longer will i sell exclusives <sighs> The last thing, and this is really a personal thing that I think you gotta really weigh what your import, what the importance of this is because some people don't care as producers, some people do care. I am no longer selling track outs. Track outs, I feel, if you're selling sound kits, track outs are pretty much what your sound kits are made of, right? That's pretty much what people are getting. They're getting the chopped up one shots and they're getting loops that pretty much come from your track outs or the same process in which you create track outs. So that being said, that's cutting into my sound design money. One, if you make drum kits and whatnot. Two, selling my track outs is exactly how I got in that situation to begin with in which said party took the, took the track outs, chopped them up, you know, didn't add anything to it. They basically just rearranged it and mixed it to their liking and then called it their own beat. Anybody could do that. Producers can do that and start reselling my beats or reselling my loops. Why am I not cutting that money? I look at track outs now when I think about in the context of sound kits, I think about them like, remember Grand Theft Auto? The original Grand Theft Auto when you could take a car into one of those buildings and it basically was a chop shop. And then basically, if you don't know anything about chop shops, I mean, I don't know, I, I ain't never been in no chop shop. I ain't never did no crazy stuff like that. But you take your car to a chop shop, they basically take all the parts that are worth money from the engine to the, if it has like a rare type of axle or whatever's going on, they take the rims or whatever, they basically take it and gut the car and they chop it up and they get as much money as they can off of that vehicle than trying to sell that vehicle as a whole. So when I think about track outs I think about it as this is pretty much the chop shop this is the, pretty much the chop shop approach or psychology when I'm making my beats and putting my track outs out there and I'm basically saying hey you could do whatever you want with them right you could take those sounds you can do what you can hey go do your thing and I know that not all producers are gonna feel the same some of them say well that helps a rapper get a better mix on their particular beats and why would you not offer that that's on you and that's your business my business model is not going to include selling track outs anymore and if I do sell track outs, it's gonna be a tax and ass price because of the risk that is involved. Don't even ask about the track outs because I'd rather not try to sell them to you. But these are a few changes that I am making as I approach business moving forward so I don't put myself in the same position. I mean, I think an overstated statement that I keep saying is go legit. Get all your stuff in order. Stop worrying about, oh, you were stealing my stuff. Okay, I'm stealing too, but like, what about if? No, all these crazy scenarios people try to give to me for basically saying, you know, in, in the past, I stole my VSTs and they stole my beat. That is a vicious cycle. It happens. They're like, no, you should steal. And I ain't doing nothing. You go waste your time. Go sue them for me. I ain't suing nobody. I got stuff to do. I got work to do. I got more money to be made. In this life, you would not be full of life until you decide to live life to its fullest. Curtis King, Curtis King Beats.com. Peace. Please subscribe to the channel below. Curtis King, CurtisKingBeats.com.